decent morning in Philadelphia. I've been here for seven years. I absolutely love it. The thing I love most about it is the people. They're just so kind. Good morning, sir. Get fucked. Well, on that note. Customers coming in. He's got some really exclusive Louis Vuitton items, and he's quite the character. So let's see what he's got for us. And he definitely was. I didn't know what to expect, but the second we got outside, I knew this was going to be, well, an interesting interaction. This dude pulls up in a sweet Ford Bronco, completely customized from top to bottom. That interior. Ooh, that's nice. After talking for a bit and standing in the 100 degree Philly weather while sweating, it was time to see the items that we had been highly anticipating for some time now. For privacy reasons, the customer asked that we blur his face and disguise his voice throughout the video. So, I didn't do anything with this. This came straight from Louis. I had it, I just, this has been in back of my car. You asked me for pictures, I can send it to you, I never opened up this box. Oh, so that's... This is, that's up there from there. So just explain to you with off white. So his first generation was the Nike, the red and white ones, right? This is his last thing he did before he died. So he did not have anything like there's nothing in the works. There's there's very limited of this. Well I wanna see which pair it is. Yeah, open them up. Do you want the receipt? I mean yeah, it would be helpful. Yeah. You can cross out any sensitive information. So that was for these shoes. So you're the first person to open them. I never even sold these open, so I'm seeing for the first time. I can't do anything with these. These are a size 10. I'm yeah. a 13, and my, my son's a 15. Yeah, those are the coolest pair of shoes I've ever seen. You got the Virgil tags on here, or the off-white tag, rather. Mm -hmm. They're sick. Wow. Yeah, those are beautiful. They're sick. I did not know they were that nice. I'll be honest, I didn't open up. You guys can say it. it's never open. So what makes these shoes so special? Well, they were designed by one of the most disruptive and innovative influencers the fashion industry has ever been graced by. His name, Virgil Abloh. Virgil is best known for his streetwear label known as Off-White. Unfortunately, Virgil passed away after a private battle with cancer in late 2021. One of his final projects was a collaboration with Louis Vuitton where a limited edition of 200 pairs of these Air Force One sneakers were released in June of 2022. With that being said, it was evident that we were in the presence of greatness. What's going to be shame if somebody absolutely puts a wears them? Uh, if, Somebody's gonna wear them. Somebody's gonna wear them. If it was me, I'm putting it on the fucking shelf, mm -hmm. and it's it's jewelry to me. I really wanted two. The reds, the reds always a hot color. So I knew the red was a hot color. I got one in. This is cool. Got a shot here. That's cool so far. You'll never see Ooh, it like that. That is the damn. Best. That's perfect. This is his line too. That is. That's stupid. That is you would never see that. That's <laughs> limited, limited, limited. Did you wear it? I never had it out of box. You, that's exactly like first, yeah. it just Did you just get this too? So I got it, I was selling it probably three weeks ago, maybe yeah. four so weeks ago. But it took a long time for it to come in because this is yeah. part of his collection that he's not going to have no more. That's a sick colorway. The color's so wild. Yeah. You'll never see How that. How vibrant that is. That's cool. So as you guys can see with Virgil, Virgil comes out with the colors. That's what really helped Louis Vuitton. You'll never see this. The items blew my socks off, but business is business, and at the end of the day, the price has got to be right. The Play Club doesn't give me, but it doesn't give me what they sold for. So, like, I can view actual sales, mm -hmm. and when I see size 10, 85, 76. But, but you see these, and I, and I don't want to be ignorant. If you look at when they came out, see July 13th, they didn't come out there. It came out the 17th. Just to tell you the truth, so there were fake ones. So if you look at the prices go up, I'm telling you, because you can look at my, my thing, I know when they came out. Well, this is like the buy bids right now. So mm -hmm. to sell this thing, if I was to sell it, they wouldn't give me a net of 68 73 
Uh, and my friend said, don't pay more than 6k for them. But at the same time, if I find someone who wants a size 10 and they want it, and mm -hmm. I'm the only one, then maybe they're willing to pay. But like for me to stock it, I don't want to stock it above like... What are you looking for? I mean, just, and listen, I'm going to be fair with you, you be fair to me. I'm going to tell you, I have, I have somebody back home, and I can tell you exactly what they offered me, and I'm not going to bullshit you. They offered me 6500 with a, um, what is it called, store credit. How, How much, much store, store credit, credit did they give you? I don't know, like a thousand bucks store credit, but that doesn't mean anything to me. I'm not trying to be ignorant. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I was going to offer 6 and 3, 9K, but I don't know if I'm really far off. You're not far off. You're not that far off. Like, I want to say that I can make miracles happen and sell for above these prices. And you will. I'm going to tell you right now, you will. So can you do me a second? So let's, let's do let's do 11 grand. No, because I... All right, so you're at 9, right? Yeah. Can't you meet me? So I'm at 11, right? Can't you meet me at 10, 5? I don't think so. What mm -hmm. can you do? Like, here's what I would do. I would give you more if you left it and I could mm -hmm. sell it and line up a sale. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to be stocking it at this price, mm -hmm. the thing is, is when things get released at first, mm -hmm. you don't know how many more are going to hit the market. Oh, no, this is done. Totally done. You can look so, it up. Is it a limited release? Oh, yeah. Like, is it actual numbered or are they just... No, it's, it's, no, it's numbered. It's done. Don't know. So just to tell, that's why I know it's worth 11 for both of these. These will never be out ever again. It's, it's done. Once they, they release it, it's gone. So within, that's why you're going to see these numbers. This here will never, you'll never see this again. I love it. I want to own it, but I don't want to own it for a price where I'm going to break even or maybe even lose it. You, you won't lose. I'm, I'm telling you straight up. Cause you will never see these pieces. It's like, your watch is limited to 500. These are limited to 200. All of them. They're done. You'll never see this again. And I'm giving it, I'm telling you the truth with it. I would do like, if we could work out some sort of contingency where I give you nine, and if anything I sell it over, say, 10,250, I'll give you the. But how about if you give me 10 and anything over? Because I know you will get over. I don't know if I'm going to be honest. I'm telling you what. Because you're going to get, I'll bring all this stuff down. If you don't get that, but listen, don't sell it to sell it. I'm telling you, you'll get over. Don't please, you know, don't, don't, you know, I know we're, do not just sell this to sell this. They may try to make quick 500, because I know you can make more. So do you want to give me, I mean, I can also try to have a day with it. Right now in this moment. You're not great. But, you know, maybe I sell it and I find a buyer and tomorrow I'm like, yeah, I'll give you the 10 or I'll give you the 11 or whatever. Maybe even more, who knows. But like, I I'm just, just basing off yeah. what. I see it so yeah, no. far. I know, it sucks, but... Uh, damn, if I can get a hold of somebody for like a hold on. It's basically the... It's the net payout that I would get... I think... Off of StockX today. That I'm just cashing you out on, like their consignment price. I, I'm, I'm more than fine with it. If we can split anything above 9500 I know you'll get it. Alright. Minimum 1k to me, though. I'm I'm more, I hurt my hand, I'm doing left hands. That was seriously, dude? How'd you hurt your hand? I don't know, but it's right here. I've been shaking, every time someone shakes my hand, it like re-injures it. All right, so the deal is done. Uh, the deal is done. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do after that? All right, so the deal is done. I feel bad I couldn't shake his hand. I kind of injured my hand and I'm holding off on handshakes for now, I'm fist bumping everyone. Um, but I think we paid a pretty fair price for them and I'm excited to get these items to the next owner. So look out, they'll be on sale soon. And enough of that, we're gonna go do some unboxing. We got this package. What's in the package? I think it is some sort of Rolex. That's usually what it is, as of lately. Let's see. Hey, doing an unboxing over here. Be quiet. <laughs> Alright, got a Rolex box. Oh shit. All right, so we're looking at a Rolex Day Date 40. It's in rose gold, and it's got a factory diamond bezel and a factory pave dial. 
So they set it with baguette diamonds on the diamond markers, on the hour markers, and then they pave out the entire dial. A lot of people try to make these aftermarket, but just nothing like the original one. What's that retail for? Retail is around 85,000. Secondary, secondary market, these trade a little under retail. Not like all of the other Rolexes trading over retail, but um, yeah, we're gonna set the price and you'll see it on our website at a later date. All right, so that was the watch. Uh, beautiful piece. We're gonna put it away and wait for it to get a new home. Oh, shit. <laughs> nah, we're just messing. It's a cheap $5 watch. Oh, but the jokes didn't stop there, as Austin brought his deadpan humor into the next segment, where we introduce you to the Dream Team, aka the TNS employees. Hey guys, my name is Austin. I'm the owner here. You know, getting used to being behind the camera, so this just makes it a little easier to talk to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're a jewelry store and a pawn shop, but we're not the typical type of pawn shop. We deal in just high-end luxury items, so we'll deal with luxury bags like Louis Vuitton, Hermes, Chanel, that kind of stuff. We'll do camera equipment, we'll do music equipment, and we also do a lot of loans against high-value jewelry and watches. My main job here is basically oversee all the operations as well as I do the majority of the watch sourcing, so I'm constantly scanning the dealer networks, communicating with our customers who want to sell stuff, and trying to bring you guys the best prices. One huge advantage we have here at Tank... <laughs> I hate this shit, man. <laughs> One huge advantage we have here at TNS is we own this building, so we don't have to pay rent. Uh, it keeps our overhead a lot lower than our competitors, and we're able to pay people stronger and sell the watches for lower margins. What else do they want to know? Yeah, we have a watchmaker on staff. We do all of our watch repairs in-house. We have the best watchmaker in Philadelphia, and uh, you'll meet him a little bit. His name is Paul. Uh, I'm Paul. Uh, I'm the watchmaker here for TNS Diamonds. I've been working here like for two years and a, two years and a half or something like that. So I started watchmaking when I was 18. I started my studies as a watchmaker. I grew up um, in different places in, uh, in France. Uh, I'm originally from Champagne and uh, I moved a little bit all over the country. And after when I finished my studies of watchmaking in Brittany, uh, I went to England for three years. And now I'm here in the US. So I'm here with Jason. What's your name, Jason? Uh, well, you covered that for me, it's Jason. So uh, my role here for TNS Diamonds is I'm the product photographer. So I get all the pictures taken of watches and any other unique items that we want listed online. And then I also handle uh, shipping, packing and shipping whenever we, we get an order placed. Just for good measure, can you tell the audience that you're here at your own will? Yes, yes, I am voluntarily down here. I'm willing to be here. This is not, uh, I'm not held captive under here. My name is David. I'm the content creator for TNS and uh, I'm the one that makes these vlogs. So thanks for taking the time to watch. I actually started my career in public accounting and after a while I realized that type of career path was unfulfilling to me. Videography is something that's been a part of my life for as long as I can remember and I always wanted to make a full-time career out of it. So I decided to quit my job and switch to TNS. I mean this when I say it, TNS treats their employees like gold. Anything that I feel that I need to succeed in this role, they're willing to provide me with, whether it be camera equipment, microphones, subscription services, and that's a really great feeling. So much love to TNS for helping me achieve things that I never thought were possible for myself. After the interviews were done, Austin called me outside for what I thought would be him firing me. Little did I know, he was about to deliver a sentimental message to those whom it may concern. All right, so I just wanna say uh, that in this industry, it's really hard to find good employees. The number one thing is trust. These three guys that are working for us now, Paul, Jay, and Dave, that I trust them a thousand percent, and that's the absolute most important thing and I'm really, really grateful to have them on the team. Jay, what more can I say about Jay? He's my right-hand man. He's the guy that I can count on to get shit done when I'm not around, and he is without a doubt one of the hardest working and most loyal humans that I've ever met in my life. Yeah, so Paul, our watchmaker, he's one of the most talented watchmakers that I've ever met in my life. He's the type of watchmaker who normally ends up working for a prestigious company like Rolex, AP, Paddock, yet somehow he's ended up here with us at TNS. So all I can say is that I'm extremely grateful to have him here and we're really, really lucky. 
And Dave, the guy behind the camera, his brother is one of my best friends and Dave over the years has grown into one of my best friends as well. He took the traditional route and went into the corporate world. Meanwhile, you know, I knew how much he loves to make videos and create content. And after complaining about his job one too many times, I told him, just quit that job and come to TNS. And he took the leap of faith and now we're gonna create our dreams together. So thank you, Dave, for joining the team. And I'm really excited to see uh, where we're gonna take it here from next. You're gonna make me cry. You wanna see a grown man cry? I mean, kind of. And last but certainly not least, the biggest shout out goes to my father, Tony. He's the one who founded this company in 1991 and he passed the torch off to me in 2015. So all these opportunities that we're creating here wouldn't have been possible without him. So thank you so much. Oh, would you look at that? We laughed, we cried, we saw some pretty interesting things that we don't get to see every day. What more could you ask for? I hope you enjoyed the production. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Maybe you can be featured in an episode if you bring in an item of interest, who knows? But until then, I'm David with TNS. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon for another episode.